In this video we share the prophetic message of our Lord to mystic Maria Voltorta. Maria's work, initially titled Poem of the Man God, was initially dumped in the Church's list of forbidden books, as was the work of Saint Faustina Kowalska. The list was scrapped by the late Pope, Paul VI, paving the way for the work to spread worldwide. It is now being hailed even by atheists who found details in her account of the life of the Holy Family, in perspectives of astronomy, geography, history, etc., accurately in sync with science. Also Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta read Voltorta, and urged that her work be read. As aid to conversion, let us consider this message to Maria. Our Lord Jesus said to her. They fear death who know not love and whose conscience is not tranquil. And they are the majority. These, when they feel themselves threatened by death from sickness, or age, or from whatever other factor, become frightened, afflicted, and they rebel. They try to, with all their strength and every means, to escape it. Uselessly, because when the hour is marked, no caution avails to ward off death. Always just is the hour of death, because it is given by God. I alone am proprietor of life and of death, and if certain means of death are not mine, but used by men through demonic instigation, the sentences of death are always mine, given to take a soul away from too much earthly torment or to prevent greater faults of that soul. Now note, why would I give the gift of life, of a long life? For two reasons. The first, because that creature who enjoys it is an enlightened spirit who has the mission to be a beacon for other spirits still wrapped in the clouds of materialism. Many of my saints have reached old age just for this purpose. And only I know how anxiously they yearned instead to come to me. Second, I give long life to furnish an unformed creature with the means, every means, to be formed. Studies, friendships, holy encounters, sorrows, joys, readings, chastisements of war or of sickness, all comes from me, and I give them seeking for a soul to grow in my age, which is not like your physical ages. For to grow in my age means to grow in my wisdom, and there can be adults in my age who have the age of children, as you reckon age. Or, conversely, they who are a hundred years old, as you reckon age, can be childish in my age. I do not look at the age of your flesh which dies, I look at your spirit, and I want you to become spirits who know how to walk, to talk, to act surely, and not be stuttering, tripping and incapable of doing things, as children are. That is why I speak my enough more swiftly for creatures whom I find to be adults in faith, in charity, in life. A father always desires to be reunited to his sons, and once their education or military service is finished, with what joy does he not clasp them to his heart? And will your good father whom you have in heaven act differently? No. When he sees that a creature is adult in spirit, he burns with the desire to take it to be with him. And if, out of pity for the people, he sometimes leaves his servants on earth, so that they may be a magnet and compass for others, at other times he does not restrain himself but gives himself the joy of setting a new star in heaven with the soul of a saint. Here on earth where you are, the soul draws God to itself, and God descends to find his delights near this loving creature which lives from him. The soul yearns to climb up to where it may be without veils eternally with its God. And God, from the center of his burning ardor, draws the soul to himself, just as the sun attracts the drops of dew. And he yearns to have it near him, a gem enclosed in his triple fire which gives bliss. Maria, the upraised arms of the soul meet the outstretched arms of God. When they touch, if they, merely, graze each other quickly, on earth it is ecstasy, when they clasp each other continually, it is the endless bliss of heaven, of my heaven which I have created for all of you, my beloved ones, and which will give me a superabundance of joy when it is filled with all my beloved ones. What an eternal day of immeasurable joy will be ours, for us who love each other, we, God, one and triune, and you, God's children. 
but those who through their own misfortune have not understood my love, have not given me their love, have not understood that only one science is useful, that of love, for them death is dreadful. They are afraid. They are still more afraid if they feel they have done little good, or all evil. Man's lying mouth, for rarely does man's mouth speak the truth, so beautiful and blessed, the truth which I, Son of God and Word of the Father, have taught you to speak always, rather, in order to deceive and comfort himself and to deceive others, man's lying mouth says, I have done well and I do well. But conscience, which stands like a double-sided mirror under your ego and under God's eye, accuses man of not having done well and of not at all doing well as he proclaims. Then a great fear troubles them, the fear of the judgment of him to whom the thoughts, the actions, the affections of man are not hidden. But if you fear me so much as judge, O poor wretches, why do you not avoid having me as judge? Why do you not make me your father? If you fear me, why do you not act according to my orders? You do not know how to listen to me when I talk to you with the voice of a father who guides you, hour by hour, with a hand of love. But at least obey me when I talk to you with the voice of a king. It will be a less rewarded obedience, because less spontaneous and sweet to my heart. But it will always be obedience. So then why do you not do it? Death is not dodged. Blessed are they who will come to that hour with a garment of love to meet him who arrives. The death of these will be serene as the passing from the earth of my father, who did not recoil, from death, because he was a just man who had nothing to reproach in his life. The end of these who love me will be joyous as the sleep of my mother who closed her eyes on earth upon a vision of love, since her life which knew not sin was all love, and she reopened her eyes in heaven, awaking upon the heart of God. Do you know, my joy Voltorta, how beautiful it will be for you too. This morning, when I came as the Eucharist, you had jumped with ecstasy because you had seen me giving myself to you. But that is nothing. A little grain of ecstasy thrown into your heart. Only one, in order not to incinerate you, because you had sensed it, you believed you would die in your emotion. But when that moment of death comes I will pour out anew a river of joy, because it will no longer be necessary to maintain your human life and we will go away together. Courage, a little suffering yet for love of your Jesus and then your Jesus will abolish pain for you to give you himself, completely, himself, joy without measure. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.